So, F1 Sprint. If you're new to F1, you probably don't know what this is. Today, we look ahead to Monza. The Monza track is located in the north of Milan and was built in 1922. The race on Sunday is 3.6 miles and 53 laps. The track is a very fast track. It doesn't have that many corners, so it's power dependent. As such, Red Bull should be strong this weekend. Mercedes have a lot of catch up to do, especially as Max won the last race. As we saw last weekend, Robert Kubica stepped in for Kimi Raikkonen due to COVID. He does the same going into this weekend as Kimi is still isolating as he tested positive again. Now, during the last race and this race, there's been a whole heap of driver announcements. As we saw last weekend, Kimi announced his retirement. As such, the dominoes took effect. Bottas has signed a multi-year deal for Alfa Romeo and Russell has signed for Mercedes as predicted. The Alfa Tauri team, Red Bull's sister company, has also confirmed this lineup. They are sticking with the current driver lineup of Pierre Gasly and Suki Tsunoda. Gasly is an amazing driver and one on form right now. He's done so well to put that Alfa Tauri in places where it shouldn't really be and shown his quality as a driver. He's consistently going in the top 5 slash top 10 and he did well last time out by finishing P4. Sonoda is a rookie this season so he's still learning the ropes but seems to be a good driver as well. I feel for Gasly as he didn't give much time in the Red Bull team and he really should be doing better than the AlphaTauri but as such the seats are not available for him to go anywhere else so it's good to, good to see him back in that seat next year. As mentioned George got confirmed for that Mercedes seat and Bottas has gone to Alfa Romeo. Why Mercedes hand was forced for this decision was covered in a previous video so click in the link in the description. So as George Russell left there was a space at Williams. As mentioned Alex Albon was rumoured to be in line with that seat as well as Nick De Vries. Now Nick De Vries is a Mercedes driver who races in Le Mans and as mentioned Albon is a Red Bull driver. It's now been confirmed that Alex Albon will drive for Williams alongside with Latifi who they retained. This is very good news as he's managed to get out of his Red Bull contract and now in the Williams team as a sole driver. It's good to see him back on the grid and given another chance as he was thrown out of that Red Bull just like Gasly far too quickly. As Nick DeVries is a Mercedes driver and Williams have the Mercedes engine in the back, I thought he would actually go there but obviously they went with Albon but he still has the opportunity with Alfa Romeo and that second seat alongside Bottas. Time will tell if he does get that seat or if Giovinazzi keeps his seat. So this is how the lineup looks. As mentioned, Albon and Latifi is confirmed at Williams. Aston Martin yet to confirm but Seb has a contract and so does Lance as his father owns the team. Haas is yet to confirm but it looks like they will retain the current driver lineup as well unless Mick goes to Alfa and this could be very likely as he has that link. Realistically there's only one seat left at Alfa Romeo. Whether that be Nick De Vries, Mick Schumacher or Giovinazzi time will tell in terms of where all these drivers go but they're all fighting for that one seat. Of course if Mick does go to Alfa then of course there's a spare seat at Haas. So F1 Sprint. If you're new to F1, you probably don't know what this is. This is the second time Formula 1 has introduced F1 Sprint this season. F1 Sprint was brought in to spice things up in the Formula 1 world. In essence, they're seeing if they can bring sprint qualifying in and see if they can incorporate into the Formula 1 world. This was tried at the British Grand Prix and looked to be a success. So how it works is Friday, it consists of practice 1 and qualifying. So we go straight into qualifying, normal format, Q1, Q2 and Q3. But however, this sets the grid for Saturday. On Saturday, we have a practice two session in the morning and then we have a sprint race. So that sprint race obviously was set by the grid in qualifying on Friday and this sprint race is for 17 laps. Sprint race is running for 17 laps and this then sets the order for the grid on Sunday. However, there are points being awarded for the top three drivers in the sprint race. First place gets three, second place gets two and the last place, third place gets one. Then on Sunday, as usual, the normal race happens in normal format and obviously full points gets awarded. So that's how F1 sprint works in a nutshell. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 grid and if you think any driver deserves a seat more than another. Also let me know if you're for or against the sprint qualifying and if it makes you more interested in the sport. Of course it was brought into bringing new fans and more entertainment to the sport as a whole. I'm not gonna lie it was very entertaining in the British Grand Prix so I expect more of the same at Monza. We should expect around 50% capacity at Monza. With all the Ferrari fans flooding into the track we can't wait. Let me know what you're thinking about ahead of this Grand Prix in the comments below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below to be notified when we upload the next video.